guys and welcome back to this channel um today i just want to talk about something that's just been a thought on my mind and we've just seen a lot of deaths we've seen a lot of deaths in this 2020 we've just seen a lot of unexpected turns happening and it just led me to think about what are we doing on our time on earth how are we making sure that our time is valuable? How are we making sure that our time is purposeful? And for me, that is just very important. Um, I just need to say that time is of the essence. We cannot afford to be wasting our time on stupid things. We cannot afford to be wasting our time on things that is not going to benefit us emotionally, it's not going to benefit us physically, and even more so, it's not even going to benefit us spiritually. We need to stop because the devil right now wants us to operate in the now and not think about our future. The devil wants us to think in our flesh, to think in our emotions and our feelings, what's trending, what's popping, how do I feel, how do I feel, and not in principles, not in investments, and not thinking forward towards the future. And I'm telling you guys, what are you doing with your time? Stop saying that I'm going to stop drinking tomorrow. Because you give the devil one second of your life, he's going to take 10 years. You give him two seconds, he's going to take 20 Stop saying no, I'm going to cut this friend off, but no, let me just go to the motive with them. You give the devil three seconds, he will take 30 years. Stop saying that, oh, I'm going to stop slacking in school. I'll, I'll, I'll get it figured out one day. When it's closer to the exam, then I'm going to be serious. You give the devil four seconds, he will take 40 years. You think that you're going to mess up, you're going to fail your exams. And that's going to ruin the destiny that God wants you to have. So guys, what are we doing with our time? Let's stop procrastinating. I come against the spirit of procrastination because there's so much hidden potential locked in some of you, but it's never going to come out because you procrastinate, because you hang around the wrong people, because you refuse to get out of bondage. You like being in sin. And I'm saying, what are you doing with your time? What are you doing? A lot of our parents, they blinked their eyes. And they were 50, 60, some of them 70, 80. And I'm very sure that they could remember when they were young. Oh yes, they could remember it. Just with a blink of an eye, it was just yesterday. Well, let me tell you something. We will blink our eyes and we will be elderly too. We will blink our eyes and we will have our children, our grandchildren for some of us who want to have kids or would have had, you know, been so far in life and we'll look back and say, what did we do with our lives? Women and men, stop saying I can mess about with this girl. I can mess about with this man. I can do friends with benefits. I can just live life for the moment, live life for the moment. And then all of a sudden, when I'm ready to marry, a, a man will come and a girl will come and I'll be just all fixed up to be a wife and a husband. No, it doesn't work like that. One has to work on himself. One has to work on herself. One has to prune themselves out of certain habits and insecurities. You think you're just ready for marriage? No. It comes with work. It comes with being in a solitary place. It comes with wilderness. It comes with learning how to be alone, knowing who God wants you to be before going to join a partnership with someone else. Because let me tell you something, a bad marriage could mean a bad destiny. Do you know that you enter the wrong marriage, you enter the wrong destiny. So let me tell you something, Stop saying I'm just gonna mess about now and I'll have it all figured out later because that's one of the biggest lies of the devil And let me tell you you're on a far slippery dark slope to destruction Oh, it's a fact, but nobody wants to tell you these things. What are you doing with your time? Instead of you to be reading your books instead of you to be joining some networking classes networking events instead of you to be invested in your business instead of you to just do things to help your health, go to the gym and do that, you're procrastinating. You're doing all unproductive things. You're up at 1 a.m. at night gossiping with your friend about A, B and C when they're getting their stuff together. What are you doing with your time? 
instead of you to be reading your word, instead of you to be praying, instead of you to do stuff that would be helpful for the kingdom, maybe go clean up the church, maybe go start your own ministry for some of you. What are you doing? Well, I don't know about you guys, but from what I can see, some people died very young. Some people died so young that it led me to question whether, Lord, was this a premature death or was this the time that you set for them and it was their time to go? So what am I trying to say? God is the only one that breathes life and God is the only one that can take away. So what are we left with doing? Is making sure that the time that we have now is productive. When someone is born, someone dies. When somebody gets better, somebody gets ill. When somebody goes to work, somebody gets fired. I think there's just so much going on in this life. There's so much going on in the world right now. So you need to understand, don't say it can never be me and you know, as for me, I've got life unlocked because clearly from this year alone, you can see that it's not in your control. What is in your control is your faith in Jesus. What you have assurances is that Jesus has got you no matter what. So please be very careful. Be very careful. Build your character. Focus on building your character. Think, think of the things of the heart. Don't, it's not about who can speak the loudest tongues and please just focus on having good characteristics, building things that will matter for eternity. Somebody blinked their eyes and they were divorced. Somebody blinked their eyes and they were a single mother. Somebody blinked their eyes and somebody they loved died. Do you think they expected it? Do you think if they knew that their husband, their own very husband would kill them, do you think they would have gone into that marriage? Do you? Do you? Somebody blinked their eyes and they were homeless. Somebody blinked their eyes and they lost their land. Somebody blinked their eyes and their child went missing. So many things are happening in this earth. So if you're not prayerful, if you're not humble, I don't know for you. I don't know what else to tell you. I don't know. Because <laughs> in this life we need God. We need God. And if you are relying on another strength or on your own strength, I'm sorry, boo-boo. You're going to come crashing right down. And that's a fact. It's not a curse. It's a fact. Time is of the essence. What are you doing with your time? What are you doing for the kingdom? What are you doing for eternity? What are you doing for your family? What are you doing to leave an inheritance? What are you doing to invest in something that will keep on bearing fruits from generations to generations? What are you doing to break generational cycles? What are you doing with your time? Time is of the essence. There is no time to just fumble about. There is no time to muck around. There is no time to just be lazy. Because let me tell you something. When you die one day, all those material possessions will not be going with you. When you die one day, all that clout and fame will be forgotten. I'm not gonna lie. All the clout and all of that, people move on. When you die and you go, money is not going to be there with you so stop thinking about what's trending now and all this money i keep saying that i don't care if i have so much money and i don't care if i have little money all i care is that lord am i in your alignment am i in your will am i walking in eternity lord am i working in purpose that's all i care about me personally because all those things will go but what will take you for eternity is your salvation. What will take you forever is what you did on this earth, is what will determine where you will stay forever. But the legacy I want to leave for myself and for my daughter is that Agnes was a woman of God. Agnes cared about people. Agnes cared about women. Agnes had a passion for souls. Agnes would go out of her way to help souls. Agnes was an influencer of many to, to give their life to Jesus Christ. I want my daughter to know I did the best to give her the best upbringing. I wanted to know that she was loved. I wanted to know that I, I raised her right. I raised her right. Yes, I had my tough side, but I also had my time when I related with her like a friend. I wanted her to know that Agnes had so much substance. I don't want her to know I was just a rich, rich girl or something stupid. Like, I don't care. What did I leave behind for her to carry on and carry the, the, the torch or mantle, whatever you say, and run with it as well? Please, 
you lot think I'm just gonna have it figured out and I'll be a good parent. Well, let me tell you something. If you don't get rid of those bondages, if you don't get rid of those insecurities, you think that when you have children all of a sudden you're gonna be good? Guess what? The mistakes that your parents did, you're gonna do it to your children and the mistakes that you're doing you will pass it to your children yes because you have not dealt with it spiritually you have not healed from it you have not gotten over it but you've covered it walked over it thought like nothing's happened pretended like nothing's happened and think all of a sudden when you're married with kids now that will suddenly turn you into a wife it will suddenly turn you into a good parent stop feeling yourself repent stop feeling yourself and repent no you gotta work on these things even me as a parent, there's things that I have to look back and say, you know, I cannot allow what happened to me to happen to my daughter. I cannot allow that same, you know, cycle to happen. I cannot allow this insecurity to go. And how can I, you know, it's all about self-reflecting and saying, where can I do better? When I, when I feel like I'm doing something that is not right, I have to take myself back. I have to take myself back. And please, oh, one last thing. If you have beef with someone, do not let the sun go down on that beef. Please, because you don't know what can happen tomorrow. If that person now dies, now you want to be there at their funeral, but you was beefing them when they were alive. Please, if you have beef, like life is just too precious to be beefing with your loved ones. Please. I know it sounds trivial. You may not need to be the best of friends. You may need to keep an arm's distance, but at least bless it. Bless it, because life... <laughs> For some people, it's just not promised. So please, do your best. That if you have beef with someone, if you have a disagreement with someone, don't, don't. Life is too precious. Your family is precious. Your family is precious. Your brothers and sisters on this earth are precious. Your children are precious. Don't let your pride miss, let you miss out on experiencing someone. I beg you. Oh yes. Yes, yes, yes. So guys, you need to understand that life is not in our hands. Life is not in our hands. If we knew that this year was going to be a year where a big pandemic was going to break out and people were going to die in their millions and people were going to be ill and people were going to be broke and people were going to be redundant and people were going to be homeless as a result of this, would we have prepared ourselves? Yes, we would. If we knew that 2020, a lot of people's loved ones, a lot of celebrities, people that we wouldn't expect to die, would die, would we have... Would, did we know? Did we know? No, we didn't know. We didn't know. Yes, God reveals to us the, the plans and the agendas through prophets and through our own visions and dreams of that year. But do, would we have known who would be the ones to fall? Would we have known? Answer it. No. So stop walking on your own pride because that's dangerous as I said and that's the quickest way to fall. Stand on the assurance that through Jesus Christ I can overcome everything. Through Jesus Christ he will preserve me. Through Jesus Christ I have joy that surpasses any understanding. Know that through Jesus Christ I have peace when it don't make sense. Through Jesus Christ he's going to look after me. Through Jesus Christ he's going to take care of me. Through Jesus Christ that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. That is the confidence that we have he is our only confidence he is our only assurance nothing in this world will assure us man will fail you Jesus will never fail you we are not of this world we are only passing remind yourself that Jesus is coming soon Jesus is coming soon what are you doing for the kingdom what are you doing with your life now what are you going to be known in 10 years time what are you going to leave on this earth Oh, that man was a lazy man. That woman was a lazy woman. That person was a burden to us. That person was wicked. That person was not good to nobody. Or are you going to be known as that woman? She helped save souls. That man, he was a man of God. That woman, she worked hard with everything she does. With that woman, she raised the money to help this charity. She done this investment. She did this. What mark are you leaving on this earth? What are you leaving? Because your body will go, but your legacy is what stays on this earth. Your reputation precedes you. That's why I'm always saying we have to think about our character, our fruits being ambassadors for Christ, because it's like a perfume. 
And whatever scent you give off is what will stay with the people. If you've got a bad attitude, a bad character, a bad way of doing things, that's the perfume you're gonna leave. And if you have a good character, good morale, good attitude to life, that's the perfume you're gonna leave. It's simple, it's the facts. What are you leaving on this earth? Time is of the essence. I'm going to keep saying this. Time is of the essence. No more time to stop messing around thinking you're going to be all of a sudden fixed. Simone de Beauvoir says that one is not born a woman, but one becomes a woman. One is not born a man, but one becomes a man. So you've got to do the work to, be, to become the man God wants you to be. You've got to do the work to become the woman that Christ wants you to be. Unfortunately, it don't get handed to you on a silver plate. If it was, there would be no point of us battling. But anyway, one of the last things I will say is that please be thankful. Be also thankful for the fact that you have life. When there is life, there is hope. For the fact that you could even wake up and breathe means that there's hope. For those that did not wake up today, it's done. It's finished. Whatever they did is now it's gonna be accounted for on the day of judgment. So the fact that you are living, please, Praise the Lord. Everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Libro do si Everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for waking me up today. Thank you, Lord, for giving me food. Thank you, Lord, for giving me a home. Thank you, Lord, for giving me education. Thank you, Lord, for giving me a family. Because guess what? Some people didn't have food today. Some people did not have a home today. Some people don't have a family because all of their family has been killed in war. Some people don't even have a job. Because of COVID, they're redundant. Because of COVID, they've been fired. Some of them could not even pay their rent. They're homeless. Be grateful for what you have. Be grateful. Don't sit there because what us Christians like to do and we don't realize it is show so much ingratitude. Sometimes we like to focus on what's going wrong instead of focusing on what God is doing right in our lives. Even if it's the littlest of things, give him thanks because all things work together for good for those who love Jesus Christ. Yes, give thanks to him for those little things. Some people, they, 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 they had a lovely day yesterday and did they wake up today? No. Some people, they went out and didn't come back in. Some people, they had the calamity right in their homes. Some people fell ill and they were paralyzed. Some people even died as a result of it. Some people fell into car crashes, all sorts of bad things. Some people, their lives were even taken from them. Some people are being abused right now. Mankind needs us. Mankind needs our help. N mankind needs us to be that light that is set on a hilltop that they can run to. The world is crying for them to be saved. The world is crying for somebody to just be that example of Jesus so they can follow him. Please, I beg you, with the love of Christ, what are you doing with your time? That boy ain't worth it. Those drugs ain't worth it. That, that alcohol is not worth it. Them friends are not worth it. Them material things, they are not worth it. But what is worth is eternity what is worth is souls is precious bought with the blood of Jesus that is what is precious once you find the need for souls God will provide everything for you if it's money you need calm if it's a house you need calm but make your focus be on souls and God will do the rest so I hope you liked this video this one was a short snappy one you know and I hope that we are not going to be so ungrateful. We're not going to show ingratitude and be prayerful as well. Pray over everything. Speak to God about everything. Be cautious. Know that the enemy's device is to kill, steal and destroy. And right now he wants to destroy people's time. He wants people to run out of time. That's the agenda. Run out of time so that he can kill you off or you will die before you even deliver destiny so that you will perish in hell. That's the truth. No one wants to say it. People want to sugarcoat it because they don't want to hurt you, your feelings or they don't want to be too harsh. But me, I told you, I have to tell the truth for the sake of the kingdom. Finished. He wants to waste our time. You, ma you, marry, you marry into a bad relationship, you marry that person, you're marrying the wrong destiny. You get into the wrong um, friendship group that will influence you into the wrong destiny. Yes, you want to smoke and stuff, it will physically take you out of your destiny. Be conscious, think, 
you are young. It says in the Bible that we should serve God with our youth. Why? Because when we are young, that is when we have the most zeal. That's when we have the most energy. That's when we have, we have it all. And so we should build our foundations, build that investment, build that business, build that ministry so that when you are older, you're cruising. And if you are older, it's never too late because some of the greatest men in the Bible, the greatest prophets, they started at a later stage in life. So it is never too late. As I said, where there is life, there is hope. But for those who are young, for those who still have a chance, please do not waste the days of our, your youth saying, I'm just young, so let me just be stupid and indulge in sin and start thinking that you will just come out perfect because that's a trap from the devil. And you know what? You're going to blink your eyes and look back and you ain't done nothing and you're going to be regretting till the day you die. So please, if I were you, think of eternity. Think of life. Think of, of souls. Think of things that is going to help you to build and break generational curses, to build family wealth, all those good things. Please, I beg you. So guys, yeah, I'm going to chat to y'all later. Like, this is what I had to say. This is what I felt was on my heart. What are we doing with our time? What are we doing to make our time better, more useful, more productive? Like, just please. As young people, we let this social media and all these stupid things get to us that we forget that there is life after social media, there's life after materialistic worth, there's life after trends, there's life after a relationship. Like your life is your own and you're the only one that must account for it on the day of judgment. So I hope you are blessed and I'ma speak to y'all soon. Thank you. <laughs>